Hello, hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. How's everyone doing? Also, where is everyone watching from? Today we're going to be painting a cactus. This is a saguaro cactus and uh, I gotta take this off this block. I painted on a watercolor block this morning to test this because I just got back from Phoenix and saw so many cactus and I, I couldn't get them off my brain. So <laughs> this is what I wanted to do, um, but I didn't have time to do it yesterday. So. Anyways, I did it this morning, and now i got to take it off. In case you've never used a watercolor block, these are um, pads of paper that are all glued on the sides. And it's nice because it keeps it kind of nice and taut. You don't have to do any taping down. You can paint to the edges, but then you have to remove it. So you just do that by finding the little point that's open and unglued here. And then you just take a little palette knife and slide it under the edges. Just like that, and it removes. got Indiana joining us. Hello, hello. We're going to be getting started in a little bit. Um, we've got about two minutes till we actually start. So if you want to paint along with me, this is a live class. I, I highly recommend that you do if you feel like painting today. You can grab your supplies. We'll need some paint. A brush. I'm going to be using a size 4 quill brush, but a uh, round brush will work. Whatever watercolor brush you have will work. You'll need some water, and then you're going to need some paints. Nope, didn't miss it. We're just getting started. So this is what we're going to be painting on this. But this is what I painted this morning. So we're going to be getting started in just a couple minutes. I did put up a poll on both Instagram and TikTok. This is what people voted for. I also had an option of these prickly pears, which maybe we'll do at another time, but we're going to do the saguaro cactus today, which actually works out pretty well because I have lots of, well, I've got a few cool saguaro cactus facts um, that, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm absolutely amazed by these. It is some, uh, well, it's not opera pink, it's uh, it's my handmade version, which I call Neon Flamingo. It's not technically opera pink, but it is pretty close. <laughs> uh, and then as long as TikTok saves this, which they usually do, every once in a while we have a little technical issue, um, but then I, I do repost this to my YouTube channel whenever we do finish the lesson. It usually takes me a day or two to get it up. I use all sorts of watercolors. Um, I have a brand that I have manufactured, and I do sell that. I also make handmade paints that I use, but I also sometimes use things like Winsor Newton. I love Core. I like um, Soho are kind of fun to paint with. Viviva Colors are fun to paint with. Um, Shinhan. I like all sorts of watercolors. I just I have I definitely have a watercolor addiction. <laughs> Uh, you know, I'm working on some light fast tests for my handmade paints. It's a little bit complicated to do on my own, um, especially with trying to get constant sunlight and things, especially during the winter. So uh, I don't I don't have a great answer for that. I mean, I've painted tons of stuff with my um, neon flamingo, and I haven't seen a ton, but I also don't have anything hanging like in direct sunlight. So uh, yeah, it's kind of hard to answer. <laughs> But yeah, pink is usually one of those problem colors with light fastness. All right, it is actually 11, so we're going to we're going to get started on this one. Um, this one is fun to paint. I didn't do any pre-drawing. I like to typically, especially on classes like this, do something that doesn't require drawing. If anybody wants to have a picture of this, if you, I don't even know if TikTok will let you screenshot, but I'm going to leave this here for about five more seconds in case you want to grab a screenshot of the final result. It's pretty simple, and cacti, these cactuses or cacti, <laughs> they um, the arms are in all sorts of places. There's every possible placement, so it doesn't need to look exactly like this. Um, we'll talk about some of the main principles, though. 
Oh, you're in Scotland? Oh, I bet I bet you have very... I, I love the uh, scenery in Scotland. I've never been, but I look at pictures often. All right. So, we're going to get started. I've got my... I feel like using my handmade paints today because that's what I used earlier, and so I, you know, what I was experimenting with. And today I'm using... Um, this is Canson's version, basically, of... It's their equivalent to Arches, so this is their 100% cotton paper. And um, I am using a slightly nicer paper today than I often do. One of my goals for this year is to actually use my nice pa paper um, because it's just been accumulating dust in the cabinet waiting for the perfect project, and I'm trying to get over that, so uh, that's what we're going to do. I've pre-wet my colors here, and um, we're going to get started. So, to start, I'm having a little bit of trouble making sure that you can actually see what I'm doing. Uh, let's mix up a little bit of a green color. We don't need a ton, but we need enough. So I'm going to put some water here. I already have some greens accumulating here. <laughs> and any sort of a lighter green base color will be fine. We're going to be kind of messing with it and adding in other colors. We just want to make sure we have a little puddle here where we can actually kind of grab from. So I'm just grabbing some different co green colors, mixing them together. And this is art, so if you want to do a slightly different green, if you want to do more of a blue green, go for it. Whatever kind of if your gut is telling you to do, I highly recommend doing that. All right, uh, the gel pens are, I believe they're Uni. This is the white one. It's a Uni Signo. This is such a good white gel pen. I only used, a t I did actually use a tiny bit right on the tops here, um, but not very much. All right, so when you're getting started with this, we want kind of a light wash of green. I filled up my brush with that, and we're just gonna start by making kind of a, a line down the page. It's gonna get a little bit thicker as we go down. It doesn't need to be a perfect line because we can come in and kind of clean it up because it's gonna get a little bit bigger as we go down. Also, remember, nature is natural. So uh, when I was looking at these cactus out, like we did a hike that was just absolutely beautiful. Literally any shape that you can imagine that's like in general, these shapes, they, they form every shape. So, I've made this. Now, in this painting here, this is still wet. I did that on dry. The goal is to kind of make it seem like the sunset is happening, but it's mainly like the big ball of sun is kind of over here. So see how I've put a little yellow on this side, and I've chosen this side to be the more in shadow. So we're going to work on that. So I'm actually going to wash my brush, tap it off, and then I'm going to grab a little bit of some bright yellow. And I'm gonna drop this along this front edge here because this is the side that I kind of want to be glowing from the sunset. So see, I've got yellow on that side. And then on the other side, that's where I wanna wanna grab some darker greens. And I'm gonna kind of drop that on this side. Plus we'll come back with a little blue to really put that in shadow. Just kind of trying to create a little bit of variation here. So it's 11 a.m. here. All right, I put a little bit of this really dark blue. This in my um, handmaid's is called Stormy Blue. Oh, I got a moogie here on my brush. And I'm just gonna drop this along the edge here. We'll come back in. This is going to be kind of a unique one where um, if you do have cotton paper, because I want to keep messing with this kind of at the different stages of it drying, um, cotton paper will be a little more forgiving for this. All right, I'm going to bring in an arm. So this is still wet. We've kind of got the base level for the cactus. I'm going to go back to that initial kind of light green wash and let's make an arm over here. So I'm going to bring it a little ways, make it a little rounded on the top. It's going to come pretty much parallel with a little gap. And then let's bring it in and we're just going to touch it there. Okay. 
Then we're gonna do that same kind of treatment that we did to the other one where we're gonna wash our brush. And on this one side, we're gonna put in some yellow. I need a little more. To kind of pr provide that highlight. And then on the other side, we're gonna take some of that blue or blue-green we're going to drop it on this other side. I'm also going to start to kind of drop it near where that connection point is because they actually do form like little round connections that do have some depth to them. The beauty of this is you can use whatever greens you want to. They don't need to be exact greens. Let's make another one of these little arms coming off. And this one, let's actually experiment a little bit with trying to kind of lift, this is still wet here. So I'm gonna make it so that this arm is essentially like right here. It's just connecting right onto it. Just like that. See right now it's gonna look kind of fuzzy and we're gonna be playing with this at different stages of wetness. But again, I'm gonna to start to drop a little bit of yellow kind of towards where the front of this will be once we do define it more in a minute. And then again, with some of that dark blue that's going to mix with that green to make kind of a, a dark green blue shadow color. I'm also going to come in with some more saturated green. I want a little variation because they have variation on them. Uh, so yeah, I use blue because it, it's a nice shadow color, but also because we're working wet with we're working in, within the wet part, it's going to just kind of combine, but it'll it'll take it one step further. All right, let's make one more arm. Let's have this one come out a little bit further here, maybe for a little bit further down. They do usually kind of radiate from one kind of central point, but I feel like I feel like we can kind of cheat one down a little bit further here. This one's going to come up here. Oh, I don't have quite enough water in my brush, so let's add a little more. Try to round that top part. And again, I'm going to kind of scribble a little bit here so that it's going to kind of reactivate that paint in that one area. And then again, I'm going to use that yellow right on the front. And then that dark blue, or you could use a dark green, that's totally fine too. I'm going to place that along the edge. So this lesson is, what the things that I want to kind of talk about in this lesson are working within something without complete, we are going to do a layer where we dry this, but this area is pretty much dry up here, but it's not fully dry. And we've got some different stages here. So for example, right over here, I do wanna concentrate on adding some of this shadow in here. And before it dries too much, I'm gonna work back right over here. See how I'm able to put that and it stays more or less where it is, but it got kind of soft. That's the stage that I wanna do some of this. So I'm gonna do the same here. And here, working on those little connection points. I'm adding in some shadows. So this is a great exercise for if you want to work with um, adding in some like softer shadows. We want to think about where things connect and then how much kind of indents they have and how that would cast the light. See how as I add these little bits, it creates a little more depth because we have kind of a bright, then we have like a lighter color, and then we have more concentrated colors along the side. It starts to look a little bit more three-dimensional. The other thing we can start to do at this point, as things are kind of drying, is I'm gonna put a little more water in my brush. I have kind of a green, but I want it to be a little bit desaturated. And then I've tapped my brush off so that there's not just a ton 
up here this is going to be more or less dry and I'm going to kind of start to hint to maybe some of the texture that actually happens on these cactus. I don't need this to be perfect because I kind of want to allude to the fact that there are these ribs or ridges And some of these are going to soften more depending on the stage of wetness that they're at. I'm going to get a slightly darker color and I'm going to do the same thing but kind of further on this side. Let's bring this down over here too. And over here. I'm treating each of these as individual segments, but I'm doing more or less the same thing. Now I'm going to bring some of that kind of greenish color down onto this one. Whoops, that one might be a little bit too concentrated, so I put a little more water in my brush. Remember, nature is natural, so not everything needs to be perfect. Plus it's watercolor, and one of the charms of watercolor is the imperfections of it. Alright, I'm kind of looking at this, I'm taking a little bit of like a quote unquote step back, I guess it's a step up, um, and I think I can do a better job on the shadowing on these different sides. So I'm going to put a little of that blue in my brush, and really kind of get it um, dispersed within the bristles. And then let's make a more bold stroke along the right hand sides of these. And maybe even right in these little crevices. Right along here. This might be one where you're like, whoa, what are you doing? Mine's not doing the same thing. And that's okay because you might be working with different paper, different materials, they're going to have different drying times, and doing an exercise like this is the perfect way to get to know those drying times. All right, I kind of like where that's at right now. So um, if I hold this up to the light, which I usually do earlier, you might be able to see a little bit of like a, a sheen it's still a little bit wet. I want to wait for a second for this to soak in a little bit before I actually make it dry because I want to make, if you look at the original one I did, there are some more defined sections where I really painted and it just stayed where I put it. So I want to wait to do that for just a minute. So there's a bunch of questions about um, why blue, why instead of using greens or instead of using like a black, often you'll find this is going to end up being personal preference, but most artists, um, not all, but most artists do use a blue or like a purple. We could even throw in a, a purple. Ooh, let's try that. Um, I'm going to put a little purple in my brush because purple and blue make lovely shadow colors. So I'm going to actually hint to some of that here. We're just, we're just experimenting a little bit. This might look nicer once, once, <laughs> once I put this, um, put the background color in because we are going to do like a sunset. And so this might kind of be a nice little color to help us kind of bring the two together. So I'm kind of trying to bide my time I suppose. Um, I'm gonna get more blue. I'm gonna get more of a brighter blue. And again I'm trying to kind of define these different shapes just using the tip of my brush. And things are getting more or less dry at this point, but they're still gonna soften just a tiny bit. But it, back to the shadow question um, with the blue, if you take a second to actually really look at the color of shadows, they're going to 
in some ways kind of actually be the color of the things that are around them. They're very rarely just a straight gray, unless you're looking at like concrete, <laughs> in which then they are. So I'm just starting to add in some little lines that are going to stay more or less where they are. Being a little bit sparing with some of these. And now I'm going to wash my brush and now I am going to take a green color and do kind of this, a similar thing on the, more the middle sections. We're painting nature, and when we paint nature, nature is natural. It does not need to be perfect. And then let's actually do that with some of the yellow as well. So I feel like I've gotten way off topic, but I was actually trying to say that, you know, what I'm kind of trying to show you in this lesson is that when we're, we're really talking a lot about the different stages of wetness and like what we can do and how much texture and how much detail will remain. In addition to we are really exploring these shadowing type effects that we don't normally really have t a chance to really talk about, especially in my shorter TikToks, because it's just is a lot more complicated. We have to think about the direction the light is going to be casting and then kind of the contours and the shapes that are going to catch those shadows. So if we take a look at this, yeah, the, in, the entire composition is meant to be like the light is kind of coming from this way, but it's also kind of coming from this way because the ball of sun would be over here. So it's going to catch the light more on these sides than it is on these sides here. But also anywhere where it's going to be indented, because if you actually look at these, um, so the saguaro cactuses where they have these little arms, they are kind of like little like additional sticks on where they really do have these like attachments where it's kind of like they just stuck one on there. Okay. All right. So I think I, I think I like it. I think I might let this be for now. I could always come back in and mess with this a little bit more because once watercolor is dry, I mean, it's more or less set, but so this is dry watercolor. I'm going to move this to the side so I don't drip on this. But you can take a wet brush and you can reactivate some of it to kind of like scribble it off. It takes it takes some doing. You can also layer over the top of it with like a different color. This is not going to be a great combo, but if you go really lightly, you won't disturb the layer underneath. But if you do this little bit of scrubbing type action, you could come in and actually make some moderation or modifications. You could even do this for highlights. Let's say, for example, you painted all of your cactus way too dark and so some of the highlights aren't showing up. You could come back in and wet like a line on part of it with your brush, dry your brush, and then you can actually grab a bit of it. Can you see how it's a little bit lighter there? Different colors are going to have different lifting properties, so some are going to lift more than others, um, but you can usually get at least a little bit of lifting like that. So we could absolutely leave it at this point. This is kind of a, a choose your own adventure. Anytime you're painting with me, um, you know, I serve to help you understand what's going on and explain what I'm doing in case you do want to do it that way. But, you know, my main purpose here is to just kind of be an art source where if you're like, hmm, I kind of want to paint something, then I'm here to help you do that. And maybe you're going to follow along with what I'm doing. Maybe you're going to change the colors. Maybe you're going to change the composition. That's totally fine. As a matter of fact, let's actually use that principle that I just talked about. And let's try to lift out from this main stem or stalk or <laughs> part of the cactus. 
let's put a little water in our brush and let's make a little line and see if I can lift out a little bit of a highlight. Gotta be patient. So I'm depositing it. And I'm just gonna kind of stroke down. And then you can use your brush to continue doing this. This is probably gonna be kind of subtle because this is a lighter color right here. But I should be able to get some of it. And if you're not grabbing it with your brush, you can always take like a little piece of paper towel. And I'm gonna make a little like point so that I have more control over where I'm actually gonna drag this. And I'm gonna kind of drag and tap. Because I don't wanna damage the paper too much. So I want to be a little bit light. I don't know if you can see it. I can see it where it lifted a little bit from that. Um, I don't think it's really showing up on the, the camera, but it is a subtle change. <laughs> That's for sure. Let's try it down here. Maybe I can get a bigger change down here to show. Yeah, you can kind of see it there. The yellow, it, where there's the yellow, it's harder to see the difference. <laughs> That's for sure. Okay, so I am going to leave it here, though, because what I want to do next is I'm going to add in the background. But if you're like, mm -mm, I'm not adding in the background, or maybe you want to add in another cactus. Actually, we're, we're kind of ahead of time. Should I add in another cactus? Or should I paint the background? Hello to Brazil. <laughs> Cactus. <laughs> Let's add in another one. And this one we can actually do really simply. So um, here comes my fun little cactus facts. So this is called a saguaro ca cactus, um, and it is in the Sonoran Desert, and these are fascinating because they first shoot up one single thing, just one, just that single stalk here. And by the time that it grows even one of these arms, it is already like 70 to 100 years old. These things are old. So, And then each arm is like seven years in between. So a cactus like this is easily over 100 years old. So if you're like, I do want to add another one, but like that was kind of complicated with all those arms, you could just do one single stock. I'll do, I'll do two. So let's do, um, I'll do one that's over here that's just a single stock. And then over here, we'll do one that's like kind of going off the page that has maybe one arm on it. Um, so we, again, we're going to start with making a little puddle over here of a light green color. Mixed in with quite a bit of water. And if you're ever like, I don't know how light is this, having little tester strips like this are going to help you because look, that's actually a little bit too dark for what I want to start with. So. I'm going to put another brush full of water in there, and now I've got a lighter version of that. All right, so we're going to start on this side, and I think I want it to be about this tall, so I'm going to just, I'm just going to start by kind of defining the, how high I want that to be, and then I can come back in and I can kind of fix this. They are a little bit, um, I got a little drip of water that's threatening. They're a little bit thinner at the top, and they're a little bit bigger at the bottom. Not a ton, but we just have one. So there is our, this is our like 70 year old cactus. This is our like 150 year old cactus. <laughs> Again, I'm gonna do those same things where I'm gonna put that yellow on this side. Any yellow will do. We're just kind of trying to highlight that one side. 
Then let's do a little bit more concentrated green, kind of this half and over. And then some of that darker blue to shadow it right along the edge. So as I'm doing this, I'm going to show you, I'm going to lift up my paper so you can see. For the main part, let's get see if I can get the reflection. See if we can see the reflection where it's shiny, but you can really see the texture of the paper through it. This is when you're where you put the things down, it's going to bleed into the other areas, but it's going to stay more or less where you put it. And then this will actually go through another stage where it's going to become like even less shiny but it's still not quite dry and that's what I'm kind of waiting for before I start to add in more of those defining little details. <laughs> it does look kind of like a pickle. <laughs> this one's for the pickle gir girlies right here. <laughs> All right, somebody says you, you it's against the law to dig them up and transfer them into the yard, which is really interesting because one of the things that I was looking at were, were all the, um, we did this really neat hike and there was a neighborhood nearby and some of the people had really huge cactus. And I'm like, they had to have actually built kind of around where they wanted these cactus to be essentially. Because also I found out that their root system is huge. So even if you were to dig it up, like you'd probably damage so many of the roots that it probably wouldn't survive. Like they go out so far because these things are tall. They're like, they can get up to like, I think 40 feet tall. That is crazy. All right. So it's still a tiny bit damp after I talked about pickles and cacti, um, but it's going to be a little bit more dry. So now I'm going to come in with a more concentrated color, tap off my brush so that there's not like so much. And I'm going to start to try to make some of these little lines kind of starting to hint to the ribs that are in here. I'm not doing this like, this is not super duper accurate by any stretch of the imagination. But their ribs are really interesting if you look at them because they do have kind of a rhyme and reason to them, but occasionally there will actually be one where it's like an individual rib um, that kind of comes out like this. They're just, they're fascinating, absolutely fascinating. Then I'm going to grab some more of that bluish color and let's do the same thing with that darker color. Yeah, if you ever get a ch if you're ever in Phoenix, um, there's a, out kind of by Mesa, there's some really neat hikes that you can just see so many cactus and then also the botanic gardens there. Oh my goodness. The number of cactus that I saw there. Crazy. Just kind of trying to add in a little bit of this to kind of get some little bit of shadowing. There we go. There's one. Yeah, how many people have actually gone and seen? Oh, look, hold on. I have my stream up on another one, and it looks like it might be paused. So I am uh, waiting for a second. <laughs> Hello, computer. Yeah, the Superstition Mountains were are gorgeous. I can still see the the comments are still coming in. Is anybody else having a paused video though for me? No. Thank you.
We've got yep and nope. All right, well, I'm just gonna go on faith that it's uh, <laughs> it's working. All right, so we're gonna make another one over here. Again, I wanna make it a lighter one. As long as you guys can see it, it doesn't really matter if, if I can see it on my second screen. It just usually helps me read the comments a little bit easier, but I'm not doing a great job of that today anyways. So I've got my light green. And let's make this one. Mm, let's try to make this one thinner because I want it to seem like it's a little bit further back, just a little bit. So that line I'm gonna make, I'm gonna try to, maybe it is as tall as this one, but just because it's a little bit further, it's gonna be a little bit thinner. Yeah, I was going to Phoenix to visit my dad and I was like, eh, you know, whatever. Like I hadn't really thought about Phoenix, but man, I had such a fun time. We went to the Frank Lloyd Wright house. That was really cool. So just got that main. I'm just gonna do one, let's just do one little arm. We're just gonna kind of hint to it being off the page because this is the real star of the show. You know, these are the supporting characters. So these ones aren't gonna matter as much. And just that the Sonoran Desert is amazing. And there's all sorts of hieroglyphs, like we did the hike we did, you could see the different things. There was literal art on the, the walls. So neat. All these really interesting patterns and um, pictures that they made. I added in my highlights. Now we're gonna come in with that kind of mid-green color. A cactus bloom would be really pretty too. It didn't actually work out. I, I, I didn't see any of them blooming, so I don't actually, I think they're red, but I actually don't know. So I'm a little bit afraid to add it because I didn't do any research on the color of the blooms or what they look like. All right, do you see how down here it's a little bit staying too much? Um, it wasn't quite wet enough, so I can actually just put a little water in my brush and just kind of swipe down to encourage it to run. If, that, if you ever run into that, you can kind of, you've got some time to work on things. They're white on the crown. Oh, neat. One of the other interesting things I learned um, when I was there, so there were all sorts of indigenous people that lived there. Like it was a, like a pretty populated area, I believe. And um, so I come from a, a farming background and there's a huge irrigation ditch in Phoenix. Like it's, it's huge. But the indigenous people actually built a really, really huge hand dug um, irrigation canal that's basically what they based the modern day one on. Um, and so they actually irrigated the whole area so they could create crops. And I just think that's so cool. All right, I'm taking a mid green and I'm gonna start making in some of those lines. You know, the older I get, the more I'm like, why didn't they teach us this in school? Cause that would have been way more interesting to know <laughs> than just what type of house. I mean, I wanna know what type of house they have too, but that's really cool. Yeah, the Chala cactuses are, or Choya, Choya cactuses are really cute. Yeah, medium green, but less water, correct. And then I'm gonna do the same with that kind of blue. Sorry, I got excited about irrigation. <laughs> Actually, that was my specialty on the farm. I, I was really good at setting irrigation tubes. That and burning weeds. I also really liked that. That's how I spent most of my, <laughs> my summers as a kid. <laughs> These are synthetic. Synthetic bristles on the brush brushes. I'm not, I'm not careful enough to have natural hair type things. Plus like, who knows? I don't know. There's all sorts of things with it, but in addition, they usually require more 
careful um, treatment. And I, I would not classify myself as a good brush owner. So I find that using um, synthetic bristles is better for me. All right, adding in some of those lines. Oh, that one was a little bit, that, was, that one was a little bit bolder than I wanted it to be. <laughs> so you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to wash my brush, tap it so that it's not super wet, and then let's just, let's just pick that up. There we go. It's a little better. It's not great, but it's better. Okay. We have our cacti. <laughs> Never apologize for being excited about irrigation. Um, hello, welcome to my art channel. We also talk about irrigation. <laughs> All right, so now is uh, one of my favorite. Oh, wait, actually, I want to do a little more yellow. But the next thing we're going to do is one of my favorite parts, which is speed on to the next part by making this dry. So I'm going to be using a, um, a little heat gun to do that. And which it can make quite a bit of noise. So if you've got like a sleeping baby or you just don't like those noises, now is a good time to turn the volume down for about probably 20 or 30 seconds. Um, and it's going to start in three, two, one. dried this. Now I'm having a little bit of a temptation. This one definitely has some darker shadows on the sides here. So I'm kind of feeling like maybe I should come in and add in those darker bits on the sides of here and then dry it again. Um, just because I think it would be a little bit better or they'll match a little bit better together. So I'm going to do that. All right, so remember, we can always modify things. And not everything is set. We can always come in, we can make changes. It's one of the beautiful things about art is, uh, or the things that I like about art is, I love the problem solving part of it where, like, just because we did it one way doesn't mean that it has to stay that way. You can modify, you can bring in different mediums to help you kind of solve the problem of whatever you're having. There we go. That's kind of subtle, but I do think that that helped personally. Just kind of helped it a little bit again. All right, now I'm going to dry this again. Again, if you would like to turn down your volume for a little bit. And that's going to be happening in three, two, and one. It is dry. So real quick, in case we have any super newbies to watercolor, why do I dry it? Um, one, the, the first reason is that we're going to be painting a background. And so when watercolor on wet paper touches each other, even when it like is pretty much dry, it does have the chance to bleed into each other. See how this one, the sky and the cactus stayed completely separate? If I had not dried this first, 
there would be a little bit of bleeding, so the edges would be fuzzy, and I wanted them to have more of the crisp lines, so that's why I did that. <laughs> hey, I know there are... I, I know I have quite a few moms who do listen and, and try to uh, paint while their babies are napping, so I also know that, you know... Some people just don't like loud noises. Sometimes I'm one of those people. Um, so we're gonna be painting a background on this. You don't have to do this. This is um, one of the more daunting things about watercolor uh, is coming in afterwards and painting a background because you're like, I'm gonna mess everything up. But I, I believe you can do this and um, we're gonna work in sections and we're gonna do just kind of like a you know, whatever color background you want to do. So uh, it doesn't have to be a perfect wash. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. We can actually kind of go with the flow here a bit. Uh, you could also, like, as an option, if you're too scared of watercolor and managing the wet areas as you try to paint around these shapes, an additional option you have to you is you could paint gouache or something like that in the background. It could be kind of an interesting two different types of... Um, mediums mixing together. You can use whatever you want to, but I'm going to be doing a background. I'll talk through how I'm going to do it. And in order to do that, um, just to make sure in case I need to do any little like scribble mixing, I'm going to clean off a couple of these areas just so I have a little bit more leeway there. <laughs> yeah, the, you know, backgrounds are one of the things when I first got started that really intimidated me. And doing more of them helps. But the other is really if you can accept that watercolor is an imperfect medium. Now, there are people who can paint absolutely realistically with watercolor, so it doesn't have to be an imperfect medium. But that's one of the charms I like about it is that it's an imperfect medium. Um, and so if you can accept that in some areas you're going to touch the subject, in some areas you're not going to touch the subject, and in some areas you might overlap it a bit, and you know what? It's going to be okay. Because it's not that serious, and nothing has to be perfect. All right, so I've cleaned up these little areas. I just sprayed a little bit of water on there and then take, took a paper towel. So night sky would be pretty. However, we did paint this with lighting in mind. So I think I'm going to go with that. In general, what I want to allude to is a higher quantity of uh, yellow on this side over here so that it really kind of shows that why why we have these nice highlights on this area and then it will get so like what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a general plan the general plan might not be how I end up actually doing this but um, I usually kind of make like a, a loose plan the loose plan is that I want the yellow to kind of go up in this direction so I want it to, there to be like a little tiny bit here because on the horizon that yellow usually spreads out but where there is like the big sun big ball of fire there's a lot of yellow so I'm kind of alluding to the fact that like over here there's a big ball of sun and it's just going to kind of cast down like this and then I'm going to move through the colors as I kind of see fit so what I'm actually probably going to do for ease um I could paint it like this but you know what's actually easier for me is getting my little brush in from this direction into all these little nooks and crannies. So I'm going to paint it, paint the background upside down. Sometimes do, making a little change like this is going to really kind of help set you up for success. And so that's what I'm going to do. You could do some pink highlights for sure. We could, we could try to, we might play with that. We'll see how much time we have left. So I've put water in my brush and I'm gonna kind of work in sections. So I'm gonna be working right in here and then I'll kind of come up here and then I'll be working kind of in two directions and then eventually we'll come over here and work in this way. But I'm gonna start by, um, you know what, we can go pretty bold with the yellow first, so. I'm going to put a little yellow in my brush, and this is probably not actually going to be super bold right away, but um, just to start, 
I'm going to start by putting in that yellow right along here. And see how like I feel more confident in doing this because I'm working in the direction that my brush wants to go. Then I'm going to put water in my brush. And I'm going to come back in. I'm going to drop more color in there in a minute. But I want to wet this area so that I can play with it. But I'm going to wet it with a little bit of yellow to start. So what I'm trying to do here is get a nice big wet little pocket here so it'll stay wet as I'm working on these other colors. And then let's go real bold with that yellow here. And bring that up. I might even put a little like yellow ochre type color into my brush. Sure, why not? Okay, so we've got part of it here. Then I'm gonna wash my brush because now I wanna be a little careful because um, some of the colors will blend nicely together, but if I do want to put any blue in the sky, I don't really want my yellow touching it because I'm going to have green. So now I'm going to take that little puddle I made and I'm going to start to move it in these two directions, up and also kind of over here. Let's throw in a teeny bit of some orange. Just a little bit. Why not? Put a little more water. Extend this little bubble. And I'm gonna put a little pink. Well, that's a lot of pink. <laughs> so let's put a little more water in my brush. We can come back in and add more bold colors, but I, initially I wanna be, I'm kind of like making a little map. Now I wanna move down in this direction. And so I'm going to bring that pink a little bit this way because remember, I want my yellow to kind of go in this direction. So I'm going to bring that down a little bit more before I start to that like a watery pink. Now I'm going to start to incorporate more of that yellow again. But it doesn't go up quite as high. Just kind of getting in there. I'm not being super duper careful. Just kind of getting around. Also, this is a nice light wash, and our, our cactuses are actually pretty fairly saturated. They're not super saturated, but they're fairly saturated. And I'm gonna put some more water in here. I want this to be a little bit wetter, so I do have some room to come back in and drop some additional colors in. You can at any point turn it off, obviously, around and just kind of double check what's going on. And then let's put some water up here. Just to kind of make sure we're keeping this edge wet so that it's not going to have a line. And at this point, you know what, I do want to add in a couple little bold because it's still wet. So let's just kind of like, I want to do like this diagonal thing so that I can continue it this way. So I'm kind of hinting to where it's going to go away. And I'm going to put a little orange in my brush. Let's just kind of tap that in to get a little variation in there. We saw a sunset that looked kind of like this while I was there. Okay, so we're going to have to continue that. Let's go back into some of that pink. And then you know what we should put because we put a little bit of that um, purple in there. Let's drop a little bit of purple towards the top of this. I want this to be kind of desaturated, but just like a little purple. Why not? Okay, now I got to keep moving this direction. We're going to add in some, um, we're going to add in some blue towards the top, but I don't want that area to dry. So I'm working kind of in sections. It's like we're making a little map. All right, let's put some of that blue towards the top. And see, since I'm working fairly wet, I can kind of place the color down and then I can kind of maneuver it like that. All right, putting more water down. I'm working kind of in little sections here. And I'm sorry if you have questions at this point, because now I'm going to be pretty heads down trying to make sure that I get this. I'm going to go across here because this is going to kind of come in this direction. There. OK, 
Occasionally I'm gonna kind of flip just to check what's going on. Let's add some more water so we don't have any of that drying. And again, see it's easier for me to work upside down. You might find that that helps. You might also be like, no, that hurts my brain when I have to flip it upside down. There is not a wrong answer here. Okay, so now I kind of want to continue some of those colors this way. I'm just going to kind of drop them. And since we're working with like clouds, essentially, they, they can be any shape you want. Put a little pink. And also, I'm sorry that I'm not able to <laughs> answer the questions right now. If there are any, hopefully, you guys are usually really helpful for each other. So hopefully you're helping each other out. Let's just flip it real quick to just see. Yeah, see, we're kind of continuing that wind. Continue, continue. Probably gonna be a little bolder with this pink if we want. And have some variation. I'm gonna wash my brush-ish, not super well, but enough to be able to wet these areas that I want to connect. Let's bring some of that yellow, or orange, this is not yellow, orange, <laughs> in. Wash the brush, scribble it a little bit down. Backgrounds are all about confidence. Because as you, as you see here, like I'm not being super duper careful. I mean, some of this does come with skill, obviously. Like the more you get to know your brush, the easier things are gonna be for you. But to some degree, it's just about going for it, you know? All right, wetting down here. And at this point, I do think I can flip my page to kind of finish this off because now I do need to kind of make it make sense and clean up a couple little areas. And so now my yellow should start kind of here. See how I've got that kind of line going? So let's start adding in a little of that yellow, maybe even right in here. Alternating between water and color. And remember, if you're struggling with backgrounds, everybody who paints backgrounds now has struggled with them before. So you're in good company. I'm gonna put a little bit more concentrated right kind of along here. And then let's just kind of soften these areas together. I'm gonna bring a little more bold pink into a couple areas. I don't know. Sure, why not like that? <laughs> Ooh, that's actually doesn't that doesn't make sense visually. <laughs> Let's try to fix that. All right, is it is it perfect? No, it's not perfect, but I like it. And skies are very unique. So that is how I tackle going through a background. <laughs> the yellow in the middle. So yeah, I'm trying to go like this direction with it. But yeah, there is a little bit here. I'm going to avoid doing that right now because this area is really dry. So if I do come in, I don't have time for a second layer today. But I see what you're saying right here. Um, let's let me let me talk you through what I would do if I were going to do a second layer. I'm not probably not going to today just because I don't have a ton of time. Um, but 
if I got to this point and I was like, hold on, that area is not quite right, here is what I would do. I would let this layer dry. I would let it dry completely, or I would make it dry. Then I would come back in and I would re-wet everything, being very light. Remember, we want to kind of like drag the surface tension, like that little bubble of water across everything to wet. And then I can actually compensate. So I might not need to put more yellow here, but maybe I can drop a little more here and I can make other areas bolder and you can actually get some really interesting um, effects as far as that. But if we tried right now, it's gonna to start to bloom away from things um, and it'll be a little bit goofy. We can also like this, this is, this is bothering me. This is still wet here. So you do have some time, but since I worked on this quite a bit ago, I don't have time there. But here, it is still wet, so I could kind of come in and fix that area. That looks a little better there. It's not perfect. You could also, if you want to, come in and try to like, we can do that with a brush or that's the one thing. I love quill brushes, but round brushes are better at lifting. But we can also take a little paper towel and you could lift out a couple little areas if you wanted to create some more texture, like clouds, while it's still wet. It's starting to be a little bit too dry, but I do think a little bit of texture helped that. <laughs> Yours is looking like a giant dill pickle. <laughs> Hey, dill pickles are delicious. Also, I'm gonna come in and uh, I'm gonna dry this really quick because we are coming close to the end of time, but I wanna put in a little bit of that gel pen just at the top, just to kind of help define a few things or just in a few areas. So again, if you're sensitive to noises, now is a good time to turn the volume down for about 20 seconds and we'll be right back. Yeah, I did, I did a little dancey dance. Did anybody else do a little dancey dance <laughs> while they dry? All right, so the pen I'm gonna be using is this, it's just a gel pen. It's a Uniball Signo. And it works pretty well uh, compared to a lot of other gel pens. I have found a couple little tips. One, you do wanna do it on dry stuff, um, which is why I dried it, as well as I didn't wanna put my hand in any of the, the dry or wet areas. But one thing I found is, so like if you really try to like push down, cause you're like, I want lots, it doesn't actually come out as well. You wanna use like a really light touch. I don't know if you guys can see on that color, this color is probably better. So yeah, if we go, if we really drag it, it like really kind of spreads it out. But if you use a light touch, like I'm barely touching it to the paper, look at how much more of that actually comes out and deposits. So um, if you're having trouble with these, yeah, you can really light touch it. You wanna barely drag it. So at the very top of these, what I'm gonna do is I'm just trying to find the parts that I think should be really highlighted and it's usually right at the tops. So I'm gonna kind of, these are gonna be subtle, but they will kind of add to the effect. Top here, top here, Kind of starting to define where those little ribs would be. All of the tops. And do those first.
I already feel like that looks better, just having those little top parts combined. And then I think I'm going to define the fronts as well. And this doesn't need to be perfect, but I am going to put a little line, maybe down a couple little areas. These are going to be subtle changes, but sometimes subtle changes are what can really make a world of difference. See how much that defined that one, that little line there. glad that you enjoyed the live. Yeah, that's my, my whole goal is to have a little fun together. There we go. Well, that sure was fun. I think I'm going to leave mine there. You could go in, you could add in some little spikes if you want to. Technically, I think their spikes are actually um, a darker color, but who cares? You could use white with it. You could use um, a normal pen or whatever you want to use. This is the one that we were kind of um, basing ours on and we went a little bit different. And I really like that we kind of explored a couple different things. If this does, we did seem to have some issues with the video. So I'm hoping that there, that doesn't mean there's some technical issues, but if this does work um, <laughs> and it does resave, I, I will actually download and then I upload it to my YouTube in a couple days so that if you missed part of this or you want to go back and rewatch, you can do that. Also, anybody who wasn't able to join because some people work now or are just busy. I really appreciate you spending some time with me today and uh, the next live will be in about two weeks. I hope everybody has an absolutely wonderful day and I will see you guys soon.